Hello and welcome to the Elliot Estate. We are in the flower garden this afternoon because it is beautiful outside and I got a very happy package in the mail uh, that has some <laughs> pressing, pressing time issues uh, to get into the ground. So let's go take a look and I wanted to show you around uh, our flower garden because it's looking pretty, pretty ugly right now. There's a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. We had a big tree fall down and um, it just needs a lot of general cleanup. So I wanted to show you uh, what we have rolling this time of year. I got a beautiful, beautiful box in the mail from Menagerie Farm and Flower. Uh, they are in California and they specialize in bare root roses. So I got three different varieties. I got White Dawn, which is a climbing, uh, climbing rose, really pretty white, says it's fragrant, gardenia-like flowers. Um, gets 12 to 14 feet high. It says White Dawn is sometimes more of a rambler than a climber and covered in gardenia ruffled flowers. Good rebloomer for winter hardiness and a classic rose fragrance. So I think I have a really great place for this to go that I just uh, thought of today when I was thinking about where I wanted to plant these. I also got Bolerio. Bolerio. I got three of these because they were a nice little compact three by four, I think three by three four by three somewhere in there um a nice kind of several kind of kind of compact i would say uh rose so i got three of those to make a cluster um but really um really fragrant uh de disease resistant smells like lemon verbena verbena and tropical fruit if i could talk good golly says that this compact floor bunda is an extraordinary strong fragrance traditional white rose mixed with tropical fruit beautiful disease resistant foliage and a wonderful rose for cutter cutting so i have yet to kind of know where i'm going to put this but i do know i want to put them in a cluster somewhere in the garden and then the last one i got is this perfuma earth angel and perfuma did i say that right look how seriously so beautiful this is Oh, peony shaped blooms, uh, exceptional vigor, it says, incredibly beautiful peony shaped blooms with a cream exterior and a warm pink center. This is a healthy, well-formed rose with exceptional vigor. So this one gets five feet high, four feet wide, and I just could not, could not uh, pass up that beautiful pink and white bloom. So pretty. So this one's a little bit bigger, um, bigger than that the set of three that I got. So I got them out of the package whenever they first arrived and I started to soak them in water. Um, but this is what they looked like when they came. They were just down in this plastic bag. It was moist. They were happy. You can see a bunch of happy little growth starting to take off here. So I want to get them in the ground because um, it says that they don't want to be sitting in here for too long, obviously. Um, they're going to be happier in the ground. So um, this is a bare root and I'm going to be putting them in the ground. Um, I'm going to be digging their hole and I'm going to be filling it up to like right about it here. I'm going to say like right in the neck area. And that's it that's kind of all you just put them in the in the hole backfill and then we're gonna watch them take off now some of them do have um it looks like some black spots so i might just prune that that off so i wanted to start down here in the flower garden because i originally thought that i was going to plant some of the roses um back here i have like a hedge of hydrangeas right in front of where the tree fell uh, and then i do have a couple uh roses kind of in between the hydrangea bushes and that cast iron tub um, but as you can see a lot of things need done uh, one being the elephant in the room is the big tree um, that needs to be taken care of. Um, so we'll get that cleaned up. But we have three hydrangeas back here. Um, and then I have some raised beds for um, growing flowers. Now these are railroad ties. There's a lot of controversy over, um, you know, if you're growing foods, vegetables, and that kind of stuff. Um, having railroad ties as like your bed your bed border probably not the smartest thing um since you know the chemicals and stuff from the railroad ties can leak into the ground and essentially up into your plants 
However, we just have flowers in here. I usually do um, some cut flowers. Over here I had some lavender uh, last year. Um, and this space is gonna kind of get a major overhaul hopefully this year. I want to add um, several more beds. So we have like a double, double stack of railroad ties here, here, and here. And then you can see where Jameson is in his little car seat. I have a smaller bed that's only like one of these railroad ties deep. So I want to continue on and do uh, one railroad tie bed here, one bed here. So it's kind of kind of lays out like a formal, a formal bed situation. So it looks a little bit more organized and structured. And then, like I said, back here we have um, kind of like a hedge of roses that I want to continue to add on to. Cast iron tub. I planted dahlias in before. Um, I think it's going to be moved to another part of the garden. Um, so we're going to continue on with the black plastic. And uh, once those beds are uh, kind of set and that kind of thing, we'll cut out the plastic, fill it with raised bed mix. And then where you are seeing all of this black plastic, that is where pea gravel is going to be going. Um, I mean, give or take, obviously, with the exception of where the beds are and that kind of stuff. Um, so all of this will look really nice and clean. Um, you'll hear that crunching of the pea gravel underneath your feet. And then back here, like I said, we have roses. I have one, two, three David Austin roses right now. Oh, I need to get this cleaned up because it's a hot mess. I have a golden celebration David Austin rose. This one is a four by four. It's a large shrub, golden celebration. Um, really pretty pale yellow. Let's see what it says. Uh, yellow, yellow blooms in the form of giant cups, strong tea fragrance, and combined with notes of like a wine and strawberry. Uh, forms a rounded shrub, ample foliage, and the flowers held beautifully poised on long arched branches. What well, doesn't that sound divine? I have a Litchfield Angel, which, which is a 5x5. Five five. That one kind of looks like it has like a peachy color um, bloom. And then this is a, I'm going to butch it, Moline, Molino. Um, this is a 4x3. And it looks like it kind of has that yellowy kind of pink toned blooms, which are going to be really pretty too. Um, says, tinged with orange at first, quickly becoming a wonderful rich yellow. Kind of has a light to medium musky tea rose scent. I'm really excited. And you can see there is some growth down here happening. So I don't want to tackle this today. I don't have the energy and I'm not feeling super up to par, um, but all of this fabric needs relayed. And then um, I want to come in here and I think I want to outline the rose beds just to kind of define it a little bit. I don't know with what, um, but then that will just be like its own little rose, rose bed essentially. And then I have the hydrangeas dotted around and those will be kind of like sitting down in the pea gravel essentially. So that's a whole nother, whole nother ball game and whole nother day. Um, I do know that I want to get these roses in the ground. So let's go find the perfect spot. I think I want to dash them up in here and then I have one, uh, a great spot for the climber that I think we can figure out. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I start to walk around the garden and I'm like, oh, that could go there. Ooh, is that like the best option though? And then I move on and I'm like, ooh, it could go there, but are the colors gonna be good? Is the foliage gonna look good together? And then I make no decision. I keep walking around, I'm like, make no progress. Anyway, I think I found the perfect spot for, <laughs> the perfect spot for this Parfuma Earth Angel <laughs> Rose. <laughs> So I have a Miss Molly uh, butterfly bush that needs hacked down, but this one gets like four to five feet tall. I mean, you can see where it's kind of tingling at. It's kind of like up to my chin and I'm 5'8". Um, so anyway, we'll have hot pink there. Um, I have, I think this is a dwarf lilac. 
that's all I know. So I think it's going to like cap out right in there somewhat. So I think it'd be really nice to have the, uh, the earth angel rose right in here. It'll probably get as tall, if not bigger, uh, than this Miss Molly. And I think the colors might be really nice, uh, compared to that hot pink. So I'm going to plant it right where that bucket's at. Um, and then we'll move on to the three Bolero. Bolero. <laughs> I put it in a Bolero. <laughs> So I cut the landscaping fabric back so I could dig my hole and I'm going to be popping the rose in there. Um, like I said, I'm going to be planting it, uh, let's see, up until like right in here-ish. You can see where there's a growth point right there. So right underneath there I would say would be great. Um, and I think... This will be a great location for it next to everything else. All right, all finished. So what I did was I watered it in and then I, I used this rose and flower care. I got it from our local nursery. Um, and this helps protect and then also feeds them all in one. So we have an issue with Japanese beetles eating the leaves and stuff. And I told Taylor that this is the year for my roses. I'm going to, to be on it with um, just a regimen and washing them closely because the Japanese beetles, they'll get in there and eat all of, all of the greens and stuff. And then the roses end up put, putzing out for the season or end up killing them. So I noticed that whenever I used this last year that it helped. I don't really know anything much more than it's helped my flowers so or the roses. So um, you do a cup full and you just dash it around the base and then it just releases into the soil that way. So we have three more of those boleros and then I have that climbing, climbing rose, the white dawn, or no, what's it called? Do, 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 yeah, white dawn that we have to get planted. I just got the last bolero in the ground and I decided to put it here next to this um, this evergreen I think it'll be okay for several years I mean once this tree gets bigger and more established I might end up having to move it elsewhere but for now I think it'll be a nice little fill in spot we have a natural pathway that goes right through here uh, to kind of cut in from the yard um, so I think a big mass of white rose blooms will be really really pretty <laughs> can you hear julius in the background and it was funny because i told you that i wanted to do a cluster of three well i ended up splitting them up so i have one of the boleros here and then up here here's the courtyard that i gave a tour through things are coming in really beautifully really starting to green up i used the other two right here in front of my in-laws screened 
screen porch. So I have one here, one here, and I think it'll be really pretty to flank. And with them topping out at like three to four feet, it won't block any views or anything. Um, and I think it'll be really pretty to have that white rose there with the scent um, kind of lingering there on the porch. The only issue that I think this one's going to have is with the gutter right here. Usually, you know, if we get a heavy rain or, st or anything, um, there will be a pool of water. So I think we're going to have to address the, the gutter issue. That way it doesn't uh, rot out the rose. But I think it'll be really pretty to have both of those flanking and then kind of entering into the courtyard. And then the last rose, the climber, the Parfuma Earth Angel, I put right over here on the corn crib. So this corn crib kind of is in front of our chicken coop there in the back. Julie Bug, what are you doing? And my thought process, and this is what I, this was my thought process this morning. I thought, oh my gosh, it'd be so beautiful here on the corn crib if I can somehow get it to train up and kind of like linger over the corn crib door. I think it'll be gorgeous, especially with that like soft pink to white um, rose bloom. I think it'll be really pretty. And then I, it was funny because I told you guys that I wasn't going to do anything like massively uh, in work or heavy work and I end up pulling up all of these little um, uh, this little rock wall because it was like sinking and stuff so I pulled it up for my mother-in-law reset it uh, and then we'll come in and she has I think um, a really special uh, I think it's a columbine if I'm not mistaken uh, I think that's what's coming up but she I think that's the only thing she has in here and this is a really pretty azalea um, that looks really striking against that green once it's in bloom. All right, so I can't tell if I have any dirt or anything on my, on my face. I'm pretty sure I have baby snot on my shoulders, um, but I'm really happy to have those roses in the ground. Like I said, Bare Roots from Menagerie uh, Farm and Flower, they're out in California. They specialize in beautiful, beautiful roses. Uh, and when they release them, I think it's at the beginning of the year, I think it was in January, when they released them online, um, I just, I got lost and I'm a sucker for marketing and they have a beautiful photography and like her whole website is incredible. So I was swooning and essentially that's what sold me on the roses. I watered all the roses in and then I gave them those granule, granules around uh, the base, around the stem. And I was reading the package and it said you don't have to do um, those granules again for another eight weeks. So we're looking at probably like the beginning of July. Um, I will sprinkle more on there and I really hope that'll be the answer to um, getting really pretty uh, roses for the season because I have a lot and I have a lot invested and I would love, I would love to see those rose blooms because there's nothing besides peonies. There's nothing that matches that rose perfume. So anyway, um, thank you guys for watching uh, and thank you for visiting the Elliott Estate. We will see you later. Bye-bye.